couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there Lickin' Riffers, welcome to another installment in the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern exercise series. This lesson is aimed for the intermediate players among you as we alternate every week between beginner, intermediate and advanced. Beginner, intermediate and advanced. This lesson is for the intermediate players. So today we're gonna arpeggiate some chords and we're gonna test what we can do with those arpeggios. In the first exercise we're gonna hammer on and pull off some notes inside the arpeggios themselves and then we're gonna arpeggiate the chord and do some bass movements. We're gonna do some bass melodies. Very rudimentary, um, but still, it's an exercise. So let's start with this. Okay, this is the basis for the exercise and the full exercise sounds something like this. For this exercise is using your first finger and your pinky for a hammer-on and a pull-off. The rest of the fingers uh, apply the chord. So you hammer on from 0 to 1 on the second string with your first finger. You pull off from 3 to 0 on the E string with your pinky. Okay, now we start with C. So we play the fifth string, that's the bass for the C chord. And then we play the third string for the arpeggio, and then we do the lick. Okay, a hammer on from zero to one on the second string, a pull off from three to zero on the first string. So five, three, two, one. Okay, string wise. Okay, that's already an arpeggio, and then we play strings two and three complete the arpeggio. So we get this. That's the first chord. The second chord is A minor and we do exactly the same thing. Strings 5, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. Now for those of you who already wish to play a variation, instead of playing the third string for the last note, you can pull off the one off of the second string and then you get this. Okay, that's another option. So Okay, that's another melody. Creates a completely different expression of the chord. Um, then you do it with G. So make sure you're using these two fingers, fingers two and three for the G head, two and three on strings five and six, and then you do exactly the same thing, your bass note being the sixth string. Or, okay, the second variation. Or, the first. Then with F, we do the fingerstyle F. The fingerstyle F is this, the thumb for one on the sixth string, the first, second, and third fingers for strings two, three, and four on one, two, and three, an F chord. But we leave the E string open, so we get an F major seven chord. Okay, now for this exercise, I don't use the D string, so we can take the third finger off of the D string and just leave the thumb, the first, and second fingers and we play this. Okay, that's a variation just to indicate the ending of the loop so um, it won't get too boring when you practice it. So it's the bass, one on the sixth string, and then the third string, then a hammer on from zero to one on the second string as usual, but then you play the open E string, then you play the second string, you pull off from zero to one, and then the third string. So um, again, 6th string, 3rd string, hammer on on the 2nd string, E string, pull off on the 2nd string, 3rd string. Okay, so there you have it. You can also alternate on that, you can play the original lick, okay, using your pinky on the E string, if you want, but I find this interesting. Okay, just to indicate the ending. So that's the first exercise for this video. Okay. So 
Um, the second exercise employs the thumb for a thumb melody. Again, very rudimentary melody. It's a thumb arpeggio, but still, it's a thumb melody. So, we play this. Okay, a double arpeggio with an extra lick. But first, we need the basis. So, the very basic lick is the nothing else matters um, rhythm pattern. It's the bass note, this time for A minor it's the fifth string, and then strings 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. Okay, but we add extra bass notes. So you play the bass note, then you play the third string, then you play the second string with the fourth string, then you play the first string with the third string. But you play the third string with your thumb, because that gives it a different dynamic, okay, a different sound, slightly different but noticeable than, play, than when it's played with your fingers. So you get this. Okay, you get the bass note sound because you're playing it with the thumb. It's a, it's a very slight difference, but it makes a whole lot of difference because it's dynamic. So okay, that's the that's the pattern. Bass note, third string, second and fourth, first and third. And then you continue and complete the arpeggio, you play strings two and three. So you get this. And you can play it with any chord you like. Okay, and I always play strings four and three as the extra bass notes, even if the first bass note is on the sixth string, um, for example. Or E minor. Okay? You can also play strings six, five, and four as another exercise, or a variation on this exercise. Okay, can you hear it? But when you play the E-shaped chords, when you play this, you get this. Okay, it's octaves. So that's why I prefer these notes. Because that creates a harmony instead of octaves. Now I know, technically octaves are harmonies, but you know what I mean. So... You can also alternate between them, you can do this. I loop it around, and for the first loop, I play strings 6, 5, and 4 as the bass notes, and for the second loop, I play 6, 4, and 3. So that's another variation of the same exercise. You see, the options are endless when you think about it. Um, well, not endless, but it's a big number. So um, that's the exercise. So you can do it with any chord progression you like, just choose chords and start doing it. Um, you can also do it with the previous uh, exercises chords. F major 7 sound. Embellished chord. Um, you can do any chord you like. Suspended chords. Okay. Ninth chords. Okay. Any chord you want will work. This is just an exercise. It's just a rhythm pattern. You can do it with any harmony you wish. Now for the variation. The variation is this. It's exactly the same thing, but you hammer on from 0 to 1 when you play the second string. Okay? Everything else is the same. Now, another variation, you guessed it, is to play the pull-off from 3 to 0 when you play the E string. But that changes the rhythm. You see, I almost got confused there. It changes the rhythm to tum tum ta ka tum 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 because we're on 6 8th time instead of 4 4 time as the first exercise was so take that into account Okay but the bass
basic exercise was to add the hammer on on the second string. Okay, add that. Once you're comfortable with that, you can add a pull off on the E string. Okay, so those are the exercises for this video. I'll see you in the next video. But in the meantime, you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Go download the tab from the website. It's for free. The link is in the description. Everything on Lincoln Riff is for free. But you've got a donation button if you want to give something back. Everything goes right back into Lincoln Riff, into making these lessons. Actually, this entire video series is a donation by a very generous uh, viewer. So thank you very much. Um, private student and um, I'm sure we all appreciate it so you see the donations always go back right into Lick and Riff so if you want to help out I'd be more than grateful for your help so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye for now